so our next topic is going to be um sorry my computers are just right triangle trigonometry okay so our trigonometric ratios if you guys remember this is back from geometry or those of you guys that might have taken physics you would have seen this in physics as well um we have the sine the cosine and the tangent ratio so your sine is your leg over your hypo the leg of your opposite over your hypotenuse your cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and your tangent is opposite over adjacent so a little acronym that we remember this by is called SOKATOA because the sine ratio is sine over hypotenuse ka is for the cosine which is um, adjacent over hypotenuse and then TOA is tangent is opposite over adjacent okay so that's what we're going to be using so this is just a little review of that so it says here on each triangle, write the indicated ratio. So the sine of angle A. So here is angle A. Now, if you remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to identify the opposite, which is opposite angle A. So opposite angle A is 21. So I'm going to put OPP here for opposite. And then the hypotenuse is the side across the 90 degree angle. So this is my hypotenuse. Okay. So the ratio here would be 21 over 35. Now, usually we do have to reduce this. So 21 over 35 would give us 3 over 5. Okay, moving on to the next one, we have cosine of angle C. So here is angle C. Now cosine is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Okay, so your adjacent is the side that's touching the angle. Okay, the leg that's touching the angle. So this is my adjacent side because it does touch the angle. Sorry, that looked like a little... And then my hypotenuse is the side across the 90 degree angle, which is the 34. So when I set this up, the 16 goes on top, the 34 goes on bottom. And then we reduce this, this reduces to 8 over 17. Okay, last here is my tangent. My tangent stands or er, is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. Okay, so it's going based off of angle A. So here's angle A. So the opposite would be this 48, and then the adjacent would be the 14. Okay. So the opposite is going to be 48, and my adjacent is 14. So 48 over 14, we're going to go ahead and see what that reduces to. Um, one, second. I don't have this calculator next to me, but um 24 over 7. i thought i reduced more but no okay so here um it says here use trigonometric ratios to find the value of x in each triangle and round to the nearest tenth so we're rounding to the nearest tenth so we go ahead and look here we see which angle they give us so they give us this one's angle 18. okay they want us to find x which is directly opposite our angle so I'm going to put an OPP here for opposite. And then they give us 34.6. That happens to be our um, hypotenuse. Okay, so then we see which trick function is opposite and hypotenuse, which one has that So in this case, if I have my SOKATOA, this is considered sine. So sine of 18 degrees is equal to my opposite, which is x, over my hypotenuse, which is 34.6. 34.6, okay. Just in case you don't remember, I'm going to go ahead and write Sokotoa up here. Again. So, so, toa. Okay, so that's how I knew how to use that I need to use sign is because it has O and H, which is the two given ones. Or one's given, the other one we're trying to find. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out what X is. So I put this over 1. And I cross multiply. So this means 34.6 times sine of 18 equals 1 times x is just x. So in my calculator, now you do need to make sure your calculator is in degree mode, which I did before this. So I'm going to do 34.6 times, oh, whoops, 0.6 times sine of 18 enter and that gives me 10.69 so we're rounding to the nearest 10 so that would be 10.7 equals 10. does it give us units it does it's millimeters okay so let's move on to the next example so 
So here, um, using our, let's see, 38, because that's the angle that they give us, this is considered my adjacent. This one is considered my hypotenuse because it's across my 90 degree angle. So here, adjacent and hypotenuse happens to be our cosine function. So that means we're using cosine. So cosine of 38 equals the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 25. I'm going to go ahead and put that over 1. And we cross multiply. And that gives us 25 times cosine of 38 equals 1 times x is just x. So here I'm going to go ahead and multiply 25 times cosine of 38. Enter, and that gave us 19.70. So that's going to round as 19.7. We do have units again to be millimeters. That's it. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay. So here, um, they give us this angle here, 62 degrees. This is, happens to be opposite my angle. This one happens to be the adjacent side. The hypotenuse we don't have to worry about. Um, because they didn't put anything there. So opposite and adjacent is going to be my tangent function. So tangent of 62 degrees equals my opposite, which is 11, over my adjacent, which is x. Okay, so I use this section. Now, because the O is first in TOA, the O goes on top and the A goes on bottom. Okay, so that's how I know which one goes where. I'm going to go ahead and put this over 1. And I am going to cross multiply. So I have x times tangent of 62 equals 1 times 11 is 11. Okay. Now we are solving for x. So the x happened to be times the tangent of 62, which is a little bit different than what we were doing on the previous problems because the x ended up on the bottom. Okay. So to solve for x, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by tangent of 62. So we have one extra step here. So divided by tangent of 62, tangent of 62. So this part cancels and we get x equals. So in my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and put this in my calculator. 11 divided by tangent of 62. We press enter and that gives me 5.84. So since we're rounding to the nearest tenth, I'm going to go ahead and put um, 5.84. Point eight, and then our units here are meters. All right. So moving on to the next one, it says find the missing angle. So use inverse trigonometric ratio. So your inverse sine, your inverse cosine, and your inverse tangent um, to find the measure of the indicated angle to the nearest degree. So this time we're looking for the angle, which means we're working a little bit different. So we're using um, inverse. So here is my angle here, which is x, and then they give me my adjacent side here and my um, hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is going to be my cosine function. So we're going to use inverse cosine. And my adjacent is 8, and my hypotenuse is 18. Okay, and this is going to give me x. So on this one, when I press on this calculator, I would press shift. And since we're using cosine, oh, I did not do it. So I'm going to use shift. There you go. So it does say a sign. That means arc sign, or also known as m. Oh, but I'm not using sign. I'm using cosine. It's a good thing I was describing that. So I should be using shift. This one. No. Shift cosine. There you go. And then we put eight over eighteen. Enter, and that gives me 63.6, but we're rounding to the nearest degree, so that would round to 64 degrees. Okay, so you only use that when you're looking for the angle. So, for example, here, in this case, they give us the opposite. In this case, is the, the 9 is going to be the hypotenuse. So, opposite and hypotenuse is going to be my sine function. So, it's going to be sine. We're using inverse sine. Because we're looking for the angle. The opposite goes on top, which is 6, and the hypotenuse goes on bottom, which is 9. And that is going to give me my angle x. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to do shift sign, and it's going to be 6 over 9. 
and press enter and that gives me 41.8 so that was around 242 degrees and the last example here so here they give us x the 11 happens to be my opposite the 8 happens to be my adjacent so when we use Sokotoa this is tangent okay tangent of we don't know what the angle is, so that means we need to use inverse tangent of my opposite goes on top and my adjacent goes on bottom, the eight. And then when we put that in our calculator, that's gonna give me my x. So I'm gonna put that in my calculator. So shift tangent 11, oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> shift um, tangent 11 over eight. One of the ones didn't come out, and then we press enter. That gives me 53.97, so that would actually round to 54 degrees. So that means that the measure of angle X is 54 degrees. Okay. All right, so next, solving right triangles. So when we solve right triangles, it means to find the measures of all the sides and all the angles of the triangle. Um, for some reason, this should be, whoops, this should be a little angle sign right here okay so then from there we're going to go ahead and see what they give us two of do they give us two angles or do they give us two sides so in this case they give us two angles they give us 53 and 90. so whenever they give us two angles that means that the third angle is going to be easy to find because we do know that the three angles in a triangle need to add up to 180. so one of them is 53 one of them is 90 degrees and the third angle of this triangle is the measure of angle B, which we don't know. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for it. I add the 53 plus the 90 plus 90. And that gives me 143. And then 180 equals 143 plus the measure of angle B. And then to solve for the measure of angle B, we're going to have to subtract the 143. So I'm going to put in my calculator 180 minus the 143, and that gives me 37. So that means the measure of angle B is 37 degrees. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and find the sides here. So they give me this angle here is 53. Um, they also give me the opposite side, and then we're going to have to find two of the sides, okay? So it depends which one you want to find first. So say I want to find the hypotenuse first, okay? And that means opposite and hypotenuse is going to be my sine function. I know my angle is 53 equals my opposite, which is 10, over my hypotenuse. We don't know. We'll call it x. We put this over 1 and cross multiply, and we get x times sine of 53 equals 10. And then just like the previous problem, we do have to divide by sine of 53 to solve for x. So x equals, because the signs canceled out, and I'm going to put in my calculator 10 divided by sine of 53. Enter, that gives me 12.5. So that means that my hypotenuse is 12.5. And then our units are feet. So my hypotenuse is from A to B, so here I'm going to put 12.5, and then our units are B. Okay, so now I'm going to find the other side. So here, um, we need to find this side here, which is my adjacent side. Again, they gave us the opposite side, so adjacent and opposite is going to be my tangent function. So tangent of 53 equals my adjacent goes on bottom and my opposite goes on top because it's tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 10 over, we don't know what the adjacent side is, we'll call that x. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in real quick so I can solve this. I put this over one and cross multiply, so we get x times tangent of 53 equals 10. Then to solve for x, we divide both sides by tangent of 53. This cancels and we get x equals, so on my calculator I'm going to put 10 divided by 
tangent of 53. And that gives me 7.53, so 7.5. And then remember, units are feet. And so we solve this triangle by finding all the sides and all the angles. Okay. So here on this next one, they give us this is 8.2 and 4. So they give us two sides. They don't give us two angles. They give us two sides. So when they give us two sides, we can find the third side by using Pythagorean theorem. We can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We don't know what our hypotenuse is. That's what we're looking for. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 8.2 squared plus 4 squared. Enter, and that gives me 83.24 equals c squared. Then to solve for c, we're going to go ahead and take the square root. Oh, there you go. Take the square root of both sides. So let me see. The square root come out. The square root of the answer we just got. That gives me 9.12. We're rounding to the nearest 10, so that would be 9.1. So that means that this is 9.1 from F to H, and our units are miles. So here from F to H is 9.1. Okay, and then next, I don't know why the little symbols for angles didn't come out. So we're going to have to find angle F and angle H. So I'm going to go ahead and find angle F first. So here's angle F. The 4 is what they gave us, that's the opposite side. The 8.2 they also gave us, that's the adjacent side. So since we're looking for the angle, we're gonna have to use inverse tangent, okay? Of opposite goes on top, the adjacent goes on bottom because it's toa, soka toa. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and put that in our calculator to see what it gives us. So I am going to put second tangent Okay, because we have to use the opposite of tangent, which is inverse tangent. Now, for, unfortunately, it doesn't show it to you the way it shows it to you, the way I wrote it down, the tangent with the little negative one, because my calculator is a little bit different, but it means the exact same thing. So over 8.2, enter, that gives us 26.0, so that's 26 degrees. Okay, so that means angle F is 26 degrees. Um, angle H, since we already know two angles of the triangle, we can find the third one. But I'm just, just for the sake of practice, I'm going to go ahead and find the measure of angle H using trigonometry. So in order for us to find angle H, now the 8.2, which is the one that they give us, is our opposite. And the 4 is going to be our adjacent. Okay, so remember when you switch angles, these happen to switch out. So then we're going to use inverse tangent of our opposite goes on top. In this case, it's 8.2 and our adjacent is 4. I put that in my calculator, so 8.2 over 4. I hit enter, and it gives me 63.99, which would round to 64. So here's 64 degrees. And that's it for me. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.